Hey, what's up everybody? 3D Theory here. Today is August 5th, 2024, and it is 7.41 a.m. And this is vlog number 25. For those of you who are new here, this is my tiny print farm of Bamboo Lab A1s. I got one with the AMS light combo right there. And I print out left latch, right latch, left plate and right plate for a larger product. And I don't really go into details about the larger product because for this channel, I focus on 3D printing. So I'm only focusing on the 3D printing aspects of this. But with that out of the way, as you can tell, I've already tended to these last night and I didn't start a new print for a specific reason that I'll be talking about in a moment from now. But what were the results of using isopropyl alcohol? They were good. Did it come off 10 times easier? No. They still were stuck on there pretty well, but it definitely came off easier. And if I were to rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, before putting the isopropyl alcohol, maybe it was like a level 7 or an 8 bond to the, to the PEI sheet and it was hard to take off. Now it's more like a 6 or a 5.5, which I'll take it. These came off really well. These did. Not a whole lot of sticking at all. Usually this support material right there gets a lot of chips, but this time it was only one. As you can tell, there's one there, there in the center, and three there. They remain intact. And sometimes I get some uh, marks because of uh, it sticking so well. I don't have any marks this time. It looks fantastic. I really love how these prints turn out. Look at that. Beautiful. And likewise with this one, same thing. It looks like this one has zero that, that chipped off. Even the supports stayed. So yeah, isopropyl alcohol definitely does the trick. And um, these came off really well too. And these parts are just sitting here uh, because I, I wanted to fine tune some of these tolerances so I can optimize the functionality of them. And for that reason, I'm going to do some tolerance tests today, just so I know when I 3D model, what's a good tolerance. For example, by the way, actually, it is 76.3 degrees Fahrenheit in the 3D printer room. And so when I was making these 3D theory coasters, I didn't exactly know how much tolerance to put. I put a two millimeter gap because I'm so used to working with printers that I'm not going to mention any names, but if you guys have been on this channel, you know which printers I'm talking about. Uh, they're sometimes inconsistent. They need more gaps. Um, but nonetheless, this is still great. I just didn't know how tight to do it. And so for that reason, I'm doing tolerance tests. I got a couple of them from uh, Maker World, and I downloaded them as STLs, and I placed them on the uh, print plate as I would uh, as I would place them and I used my own print profile because I'm going to be printing with PETG. Some of those tolerance tests are specifically going to influence how much tolerance I put for the uh, stealth TV tray when we start building that out. But here's how the um, print comes off. This one always came off well, but I wiped it down with the isopropyl alcohol yesterday. So this is how this comes off like a charm. That's so good. And this is printed with uh, the near empty spools so it's looking great all right that's ready to go so i'm going to go ahead and grab that tolerance test i think i'll print it out in that creality petg i had from yesterday and uh, we'll go from there all right so i got the file onto the sd card this is the petg i was talking about that i printed that clamp out on yesterday Unfortunately, they don't come with this Ziploc bag that I like. So, <laughs> I, I have some, I keep some, because I know some filaments don't like to give you that. But, nonetheless, uh, another empty spool, another two empty spools, rather. So, no filament wasted. Also, no need for a filament connector, which is super cool. Even though I still want to get one. <laughs> I'm, I'm very conflicted about that because they're really cool. They like the Sunlu filament connector. I would love to have one of those, but the AMS does the job nonetheless. Um, I think I'd like to have one of those just for fun. 
you know but we're sticking that through and just so you guys see how much filament we have for the near empty spools here they are it's about 10 so we have one two three four is there one more five yeah so we have about 10 spools of filament in there and they're all near empty spools and otherwise they might go to waste or be a real big hassle to print but because of that we can use them all i went ahead and i grabbed another near empty spool and i'm just going to load this in very nice now i'm just going to go ahead and start that tolerance test and i'll see you guys when it finishes printing it is getting hot in here so i'm going to turn that on low all right so that finished printing but i'm going to come over here for a second by the way if you guys want some 3d theory keychains i got them on my etsy shop linked in the description below and all this stuff's free on my maker world when i say all this stuff i'm referring to the sith throne vader's throne bo katan's throne green over there from rainbow friends and this stealth table it's like a stealth french side table and um what this is is a makeshift phone and it kind of illustrate what these three thrones do you can put your phone on there and you can kind of tilt it back and get the angle you want for your phone and it's available for free on my maker world you just download the model and print it and this right here is uh the apple airpods that you can put right here on vader's throne and then put your phone on top of that so that's also down in the description there's a link for it from my maker world download it print it have fun and let's move on to the tolerance tests ah coffee all right guys so here are the tolerance tests that i have so as you know there are these um hexagonal shapes that can fit the nut that goes along with the screw especially what i showed you with the clamp that i made earlier particularly this one here so if you want to put that nut for the screw in there you know what sort of tolerance you need so just a brief description of what tolerance is tolerance is the gaps around the thing you're trying to fit into a hole if that makes any sense um, and so this one has a pretty big gap as you can tell right there but sometimes you really want to get it real tight where it fits perfectly there's no wiggle room like this this can wiggle inside and also like my uh, 3d theory coasters here it wiggles quite a lot sometimes you don't need that wiggle room and you just want to get it real tight or sometimes somewhere in between where it's perfect so when you're designing a product it's really important to get that right these two are both available on maker world um, you just type in tolerance test and you can find it um, so this is not mine this is uh, someone who made it on maker world and made it available for free and i just uh, combined them on a build plate so i can test them out and so what i did is i printed it out in the standard petg profile i think i may have adjusted one or two settings I, it, yeah I, I adjusted it so i get tree supports but that was pretty much it it's just your standard petg settings so i'm going to take this off of here all right and so here are the tests that come along with it where you can stick it through so this is good for like i said those nuts uh square is just good for 90 degree angle fittings and this again like screw heads and dowels so let's go ahead and give it a try and why i like this one because it doesn't start at like 0.1 it starts below 0.1 and this is in millimeters so it's real small so i'm going to find out right now yep 0.3 fits like a charm 0 0.25 0 0.2 0 0.15 0 0.1 is getting on the tighter side but it still fits real easily 0 0.05 which is less than a millimeter and that fit but it's uh it's snug dang that is great that is really good bamboo lab a1 really loving that so now let's try the same thing with these uh cubes perfect perfect oh at 0 0.20 it's uh not getting stuck but there's a little bit of uh touching going on on the walls tolerance is getting pretty tight and the 0 0.15 that's now feeling like almost like 0 0.05 on the cylinder but no that's that's not actually that tight either let's see here now that feels like 0 0.05 on the cylinder because that ain't going nowhere and let's try 0 0.05 for this 
because that was 0 0.1. Oh yeah, that's getting tight. Hopefully I can still pull that out. Yeah, it's, it's tight, but I can still definitely pull it out. Now, let's try this hexagonal uh, fitting. 0 0.3 works great. 0 0.25 works great. 0 0.2 works great. 0 0.15. 1 1.5 also worked great, but it fell. <laughs> I couldn't catch it. Uh, let's see, 0 0.1. That worked good too. All right, this is getting tight. Yeah, that's definitely snug. So, what do I have to say? Man, that's great. I've never experienced a 3D printer do so well with these tolerance tests. I mean, I'll be completely honest, this is my first tolerance test of this manner, uh, but I've done tolerance tests with products where I would make several different versions of a product with different tolerances and try them out that way. But this gives me a clear understanding now of what I can use as a tolerance for when I start 3D designing and 3D printing products like the stealth TV tray that we're going to continue with. Now I decided to, now I decided to make a tolerance test of this nature because uh, the table for the uh, stealth TV tray that we're going to be making is going to require uh, something like that. And what do I mean by that? I mean that the table needs to be long enough so you can place a dish or maybe your laptop on there. Um, but clearly the size of this, which I think is 256 millimeter cube, the size of the print bed, it's not gonna be enough for that. So we're probably gonna print the size of two print beds and we're gonna need a way to connect those securely. And, and I'm gonna use this sort of fitting to make that work. But I wanna know how tight I can get it without it being too much of a struggle or without being too loose. So this is perfect. These sorts of fittings I find perfect for conjoining tabletops like that and for other big surfaces. All right, so we have three different tests. We have a 0 0.2, a 0.15, and a 0.1. Now let's give 0.2 a try. Oh, that is just, that has too much wiggle room, definitely. 0.15 again too loose for my liking for what I need it for and 0.1 still too loose if I pull it up to the corner there you'll see that there's a gap right there so I'm wondering if maybe I can take it down to 0.1 or 0.05 because I want it to fit real snug so it's like joined as one, so it can't easily come out like that. Once it's in, it's in, in other words. But this was a good indicator of how I can tell whether or not I need to make it tighter. So this small test here was a good one as well, just to see what, what we're working with. All right, guys, with that being said, thank you so much for joining me on today's vlog. Until next time, peace, love, and joy.